Welcome music lovers to the life and tragic death of Mark Bolan. Join us as we delve into the extraordinary journey of one of rock's most iconic figures, exploring his rise to fame, musical genius, and the events that led to his untimely demise. So let's dive in. Mark Bolan, born Mark Feld, on the 30th of September 1947 at Hackney Hospital, Homerton, London. Bolan grew up in East London, the son of Simeon, Sid, Feld, a cosmetic salesman, and Phyllis Winifred, a market stallholder. His father was of East End Ashkenazi Jewish descent, and of Russian and Polish ancestry, while his mother was English. Bolan developed a passion for rock and roll in southwest London, influenced by artists like Jean Vincent, Eddie Cochran, and Chuck Berry, frequenting Soho's coffee bars like The Two Eyes. Bolan attended Northwold Primary School in Upper Clapton, where he received his first guitar at age nine, sparking his interest in music. He formed a skiffle band at school, Susie and the Hula Hoops, playing guitar, with Helen Shapiro on vocals, often performing during lunch breaks to friends. At 15, he faced expulsion after an altercation with the deputy headmaster who attempted to discipline him, leading to a confrontation where Bolan refused to be punished. Bolan made a brief appearance as an extra in the TV series Orlando, clad as a mod. He also briefly ventured into modeling, joining our agency and featuring as a John Temple boy in a menswear store catalog. Town Magazine highlighted him as Mark Feld in 1962, showcasing him as an emblem of the emerging mod scene in a photo spread arranged by Evening Standard columnist Angus McGill. In 1964, Bolan connected with his first manager, Jeffrey Delaroy Hall, and recorded All at Once, a commercial track with session musicians. Bolan then adopted the stage name Toby Tyler and moved in with child actor Alan Warren, his second manager, who recognized Bolan's potential. Bolan's early recordings included covers like Bob Dylan's, Blowin' in the Wind, and Dion's, The Road I'm On, Gloria. Warren eventually sold Bolan's contract to his landlord, David Kirch, for £200, for three months' rent arrears. Bolan's mother later persuaded Kirch to cancel the contract. The tapes from these sessions re-emerged in 1991, selling for nearly $8,000 and were released on CD in 1993, offering insight into Bolan's early work. In August 1965, he signed with Decca Records who, according to Bolan himself, changed his name to Mark Bolan. His debut single, The Wizard, was released on November 19, 1965, featuring studio session musicians, Jimmy Page, Big Jim Sullivan and the Lady Birds on backing vocals. Bolan's folk-style songs, like, Reality, and, Song for a Soldier, were reminiscent of Dylan and Donovan. Despite a second single, The Third Degree, and, San Francisco Poet, none achieved chart success. Some recordings, like, That's the Bag I'm In, written by Fred Neal, remain unreleased. In 1966, Bolan approached Simon Napier Bell, seeking to become a star. Napier Bell recorded Bolan's songs, but only, Hippie Gumbo, was released as a single, which didn't succeed. Napier Bell managed John's Children and intended to place Bolan in the Yardbirds but chose band, John's Children, instead. Bolan's single, Desdemona, was banned by the BBC for the song lyrics, Lift Up Your Skirt and Fly. After a challenging German tour with The Who, Bolan took time to reconsider his career. He delved into writing fantasy novels and poems, claiming encounters with a wizard in Paris. This period of reflection led to Bolan's emergence as a prolific songwriter, setting the stage for T-Rex albums. After leaving John's children due to various issues, including the repossession of the band's equipment, Bolan formed Tyrannosaurus Rex with guitarist Ben Cartland, drummer Steve Peregrine Took, and an unnamed bass player. Bolan hastily recruited musicians for their debut gig at the Electric Garden, but the performance was a disaster, resulting in Bolan and Took continuing as an acoustic duo. Bolan, initially blaming track records for repossessing his gear, later admitted he was hesitant to return to electric performances due to a blow to his confidence after the failed gig. Tyrannosaurus Rex, initially comprising Bolan and Took, released three albums, two of which made the top 15 in the UK albums chart. Bolan's poetic lyrics and Took's eclectic contributions earned them a dedicated following, notably highlighted by their performance at the first Free Hyde Park concert in 1968. However, Took's departure after their American tour marked a shift. Bolan, now with Mickey Finn, evolved the group's sound, incorporating amplified guitar lines and electric influences, evident in their final album credited to Tyrannosaurus Rex, A Beard of Stars. Bolan's musical evolution took a decisive turn with the purchase of a modified vintage Gibson Les Paul guitar, which became iconic on the cover of the album T-Rex. Bolan penned and recorded his breakthrough hit, Ride a White Swan, showcasing a shift from acoustic to electric sounds, inspired by Mungo Jerry's, In the Summertime. This single, overseen by Bolan and producer Tony Visconti, climbed the UK charts to number two in early 1971. 
Boland's fascination with women's clothing, influenced by his muse June Child, added a unique dimension to his persona. Bolin expanded T-Rex to a quartet, and their subsequent singles, notably, Hot Love, and, Get It On, propelled Bolin to the forefront of glam rock, with the latter reaching number 10 on the Billboard Hot 100 in early 1972. In November 1971, Fly Records released, Jeepster, from Electric Warrior without Bolin's consent. Despite his disapproval, the song soared to number 2 on the UK singles chart. Bolan capitalized on his Fly Records contract expiration by joining EMI and founding his label, the T-Rex Wax Company, featuring his iconic image. Bolan continued his success with hits like, Telegram Sam, and, Metal Guru, from the Slider album, both UK number ones in 1972. That year, he starred in Born to Boogie, a documentary by Ringo Starr, featuring surreal scenes at John Lennon's mansion, a session with Ringo and Elton John, and sold-out concerts. Although T-Rex Records accounted for a significant share of British sales, none achieved million-seller status until 1985 due to certification costs. Boland's flamboyant stage persona, including top hats and glitter, influenced a generation of performers. During the glam era, Boland's friendship and rivalry with David Bowie intensified, with Bowie's songs like, All the Young Dudes, referencing T-Rex, and, Lady Stardust, alluding to him. Bolan collaborated with Electric Light Orchestra's Jeff Lynne on several tracks, notably, Ma 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 Bell, and, Dreaming of 4000. Bolan's hits like, 20th Century Boy, and, The Groover, featured sole female singers on backing vocals, while, Truck on Tyke, and, Teenage Dream, showcased his evolving musical style. Bolan's personal life faced turmoil, as his marriage to June Child ended due to an affair with backup singer Gloria Jones, leading to changes in his band lineup and a shift towards R&B influences in his music, evident in albums like Bolan's Zip Gun. Despite health struggles and weight gain, Bolan remained dedicated to his work, spending time between the UK and the US. In September 1975, Gloria Jones gave birth to Bolan's son, Roland Bolan. Bolan returned to the UK from tax exile, touring and appearing on LWT's Supersonic Show. He released singles like, New York City, and incorporated disco elements into his music. Bolan formed a new band after the departure of the last T-Rex member, Steve Curry, in late 1976. He released the album, Dandy in the Underworld, in early 1977 and embarked on a UK tour with punk band The Damned as support. Later that year, Granada Television aired, Mark, a successful six-part series hosted by Bolan. The final episode featured David Bowie as a guest, and an incident during the closing credits, where Bolan stumbled on stage, became a memorable moment. Bolan's romantic life was marked by significant relationships. He married June Ellen Child in 1970, but their marriage was tumultuous, marked by affairs and separations. Bolan later entered a committed relationship with his backing singer, Gloria Jones, with whom he had a son in 1975. Their relationship lasted until Bolan's death in 1977. Bolan's sexuality was a topic of discussion, he hinted at being gay during legal proceedings with June, and in interviews, he described himself as bisexual, shedding light on his personal life amidst his public image. Mark Bolan, renowned for his fear of premature death, never learned to drive, believing he wouldn't live past 30. Ironically, cars featured prominently in his songs, and he owned several, including a Rolls-Royce. Tragically, on September 16, 1977, Bolan was a passenger, driven by Gloria Jones. They headed home from Morton's Club restaurant in Berkeley Square, London. Both had been drinking alcohol, and after she crossed a small humpback bridge near Gypsy Lane on Queen's Ride in Barnes, southwest London, the car struck a fence post, and then a tree. Bolan was killed instantly, while Jones suffered a broken arm and broken jaw. The crash site became a shrine, featured on BBC4, and is maintained by the T-Rex Action Group. Bolan's funeral, attended by luminaries like David Bowie, Rod Stewart, Tony Visconti and Steve Harley, featured a swan-shaped floral tribute, honoring his iconic hit, Ride a White Swan. Two plaques at the crematorium honor Mark Bolan, one in white marble from the Tyrannosaurus Rex Appreciation Society in the mid-1990s, and another by his fan club in September 2002 for the 25th anniversary of his passing. It bears the inscription, 25 years on, his light of love still shines brightly, with a ceramic white swan below. Bolan's fortune, variously estimated at between 20 to 30 million pounds, was disappearing fast due to paying tax at 83%, so he set up investments in an offshore trust in the Bahamas. Unfortunately, at the time of his passing he had not had time to sort out all the details, so there was no provision for Gloria and their son, with the trustees informing them their hands were tied. On hearing this, quietly, Bowie arranged to pay for Roland's education in LA, and settled other expenses as he was growing up. 
After a lengthy battle of many years, the trust has now arranged that Gloria and Roland, who lived with his stepbrother, Walter Thurman, can have a house from the investments in LA, and given a controlled yearly allowance from the overseas trust fund. Roland Boland is currently a singer, songwriter, just as his famous father, and confides he feels his father's presence with him, encouraging him, often. And there you have it. As we conclude our exploration of Mark Boland's life, we reflect on the profound impact he left on the world of music and the hearts of his fans. His legacy continues to inspire generations, reminding us of the brilliance of his artistic talent. Thank you for joining us, don't forget to like and subscribe, and bye for now.